Is the third quiz gonna be much much harder than the first two? Uh, I think it's, it's not even worth it. Is it on chapter three or is it going to be the No, it's only bipolar and two cars. Oh, okay. So you need to do you know basic bias and calculus and all of that, but the focus is on two cars. Not two cars.
you want the two dials that you have here operate and respond only to the voltages that we're applying close to the surface of this device. So to the J voltage, short voltage, and gate voltage. You don't want anything else to mess it up. So what we normally do is that we connect the body voltage or the body of this device to the lowest voltage in your circuit. Right? So for example, if ground is the lowest voltage in your circuit, connect it to ground. If it is a negative supply, you connect it to the negative supply. And by doing that, you make sure that those two dials will not become forward biased levels. That's not one, something you want. You want those dials to be always reverse biased. Right? So by connecting this to the lowest voltage you have in your circuit, you're basically making the key side of those two dials connected to a low voltage, to the smallest possible voltage. And then you ensure the two dials are only going to respond to whatever that is happening on the surface and nothing else. You never want those two dials to become forward bias. So, so the body terminal in discrete circuits, in integrated circuits, in most situations, you don't see it. In discrete circuits, you don't see it either, but in discrete circuits, uh, so let me draw the symbol for MOSFET. And you said there are two types. We're going to talk about the other type today as well. This is the symbol for MOSFET. We identify the source by putting it in an arrow on that terminal. Physically, if you look at this, is an integrated MOSFET. There's no difference between the two. It's not like a VJT where emitter and collector are physically different. We're making them from different doping levels. Right? In here, there's no difference. We just pick one, call it source, and the other one will be your game. In digital circuits, we don't even identify the source of change because they don't care. Uh, but in analog electronics, it's often important. You know, need to know where is your source, where is your game. Pinch. If it is an N MOSFET like this, train is usually connected to a higher voltage than source. Okay? It's like the collector of an NPN is usually connected to a higher voltage than the emitter. So this is my device, and these are the channels. So this is train, source, gate. We already know a couple of things about this. We know that IC is zero. Right? Why? Because I have a dielectric after that gate. IG is zero for all the cases that you, you, know, you deal with. IG is zero. It's an open circuit. And because of that, and then you draw a case here around this, then you immediately see that IP and IS are equal regardless of the operating condition of the device. You know, we said there are three. In all three of them, ID and IS are all equal. And just remember, IS is the source current, it's not the saturation current we have for the IGD. Right? It's the current of coming out of your source terminal. Directions, ID goes in, IS comes out. Right? Directions are equal. So ID goes in, IS comes out. Now, the body terminal, if somebody wants to show it, is usually shown as the fourth contact. So this is usually your body terminal shown like this. Again, the direction of the arrow tells you the PN connection. So P is here, channel is N, so that's the direction of arrow, like the dials, right? The, the arrow we have for the dial symbol told you which side was P, which side was N. So this is how you show, the, show it. In most circuits, you don't see it because almost always you know where it is connected to. It's either your lowest voltage, right, in, in integrated circuits. In discrete circuits, you when you buy a MOSFET, you buy a three terminal device. What they do is that inside the package, they short the body of the source. Inside the package, they short the two terminals. Now this is not a symmetric device anymore, okay? Because now the source terminal is different from the drain terminal. So if you're buying a discrete device like the one that we will be using in the lab, the polarity matters. The drain terminal behaves differently from the source terminal. And then the reason they do that is, again, as we mentioned before, 
Source is usually connected to a voltage lower than the drain. So as, some, as long as that is the case, both of those two charges will be reverse parts. Right? As long as the drain voltage is higher than the source voltage, in this configuration, DDS, the bulk source voltage is zero, so that dodge is off. And then since the drain voltage is higher than the source, that dodge will be off as well. Okay? So by shorting the two to each other, we make sure that uh, the device is happy. Uh, he said there are three operating regions based on whether you have a channel or, or whether you have a channel or not. The first one cut off was the case where you didn't have a channel at the source end or drain end. Two back-to-back -back dials, no conduction going through this end. And in this case, you had BGS that was less than the threshold voltage. Right? So I don't have a channel at the source end. And VGD was less than the threshold voltage as well. So both voltages, I don't have a channel here, I don't have a channel here. No connection between the two. And this was our favorite region for analysis because ID was zero. And I'm not going to write IS anymore. IS is what's going to ID is zero. And IG is always zero. So ID is zero. Take it out of your circuit, focus on whatever there is left in your circuit. Um, then besides that, we had a region of operation where you had a channel at both ends, the drain and source. We call that triode region. And in this case, you had a large enough gate source voltage to have a fresh a channel at the source end and a channel at the drain. Okay, and this is uh, the triode region, and the uh, operating the equation for the drain source uh, current or drain current in this region was one half mu n c box w over l times two EGS minus V T H times V D S minus V D S squared. Uh, is it less than or equal to? No, you have, if you want to have a channel, you have to have a gate voltage that is larger than the threshold voltage. And you want to have a channel at the source end, so VGS has to be larger than the threshold voltage. And you want to have a channel at the drain end, so the VGD has to be larger than the um, threshold voltage. Trust me on that. I'll come back and have another look at these in a moment, but this is the radius. Okay? And so in this case, once you establish a VGS, your ID dependent on VDS, that's a resistor. If VDS is small, and we said small compared to what? Small compared to VGS minus VTH, right? Then you could ignore VDS squared compared to this term. If that term is ignored, then you have a linear resistor between the drain and source. If it is small VDS. So let's say VDS minus VTH may be 1 volt. If VDS is, let's say, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 volts, then you can ignore this nonlinear term and have a linear resistor between the two terminals. If the voltage is larger, then you have a little bit of nonlinear. So I D V D S and I D V G S if these two are my characteristic curves for this device, cutoff is here. 
So BGS is less than the threshold, IED is zero. That's the cutoff region, and BGS doesn't matter. For this trial region, initially you have a linear relationship between BGS and ID. And as you increase ID, it starts to show a little bit of nonlinear behavior. And then the good news here is that you control the slope using your BGS. So this is my trial region. Initially, it's a linear relationship between ID and BDS. I have current. I'm not here anymore. I have non-zero current. And then how much current depends on the BGS I put on my gate. And then we have this situation that as you keep increasing the drain voltage, you will lose the channel at the drain end. The channel pinches off. And at that point, the current will not respond because you have a reverse bias diode there. The reverse bias diode acts as a current source, doesn't respond to changes in BDS. So the current will not change with BDS anymore. It saturates, right? And it stays constant with BDS. That's another region of operation that we like. We call this active region, or if you want to uh, follow what is said in the literature, in textbooks, it's called saturation region. Right? It's the same as active region as well. It's called saturation because the current saturates. It doesn't increase anymore with BDS. To avoid confusion, I call it active region. And in this case, as we said, we have the channel at the drain end, at the source end, but it has vanished at the drain end. And the equation was simple. Basically, you go and take this equation and say, when VTS becomes equal to VGS minus VTH, that's your VG equal to VTH, then the current saturates, so it's going to stay at whatever I have at that point, which is this much. So quadratic relationship between current and voltage here, between drain current and VGS voltage, right? So that's a quadratic relationship. It doesn't depend on VGS. And uh, okay, if I want to continue this curve and finish that, then I have that quadratic relationship. Okay. So this is proportional to VGS minus VGS. So for a MOSFET, if you're making, uh, designing integrated circuits, you choose the WFL for your device. These are lateral dimensions for your device, you can do two. Uh, L usually has a minimum based on the technology. You cannot go below a central value. But above that, essentially your choices are yours. You, know, you can make a very, very big device, consequences are on your shoulder. It may or may not be as well, but there's no problem with making it. Uh, mu N and C oxide are technology managers. Mu N is mobility of electrons, so it depends on the doping of your substrate. C oxide is the capacitance of the gate normalized to area, so it depends on what is the dielectric you're using at the gate and what is the thickness of that dielectric. These two you do not change, so once you choose the technology, that's what it is. Same thing with VTH, it's a technology parameter. So once you choose TSMT, 45 nanometer, SMIC, 22 nanometer. Whatever technology you choose, these things are fixed. They're not changing. They're not, you, you cannot control them, but W over L is something you can control. Okay. Let's 
example. Let's do our first example. Okay, so very simple circuit. What is IP? Um, again, we're dealing with a nonlinear device, so if you want to consider all cases, we're going to be here for a while. You usually assume the most likely operating region in, a, uh, in an analog circuit is the active region or saturation region. So I'm going to assume saturation. Then by that assumption, I have a simple equation for my gate source and drain current relationship, right? And I have all the numbers, because V source is zero, V gate is one, done. I can find ID in one shot. So for W over L, it's a ratio, right? Um, you can just say W over L is pi, right? But sometimes to make it a little bit more explicit that what is the technology they're using, so that you can have an idea, they write the minimal length for L. And then <coughs> what are the factors in each of them? That's it. So this is a 0.18 micron technology. You, know, you, you look at this and you can kind of guess. This is a 0.18 micron technology. You don't have to use the minimum value, right? So if it is important to you, and I know that electronics is important in a lot of cases, that you choose something other than the minimum value, you will be explicit. You will say it is 25 over 25, right? You give an exact number, not just a ratio uh, for that transition. But anyway, so um, times 2 over 18, OK? And if you do the math, this is going to be 0.2 meters. OK? Easy enough? We have to hmm? verify its region. Of it. We have to verify its region. We have to verify. We assumed it was active. Is it active or not? That's what I see. We have to check based on what we have calculated. So, Good thing is that VGS I already know. VGS is one that is larger than the threshold voltage. So that one is thick. VGD I need to calculate. So VGD is V gate minus V drain. V gate is one. V drain is what? VDD minus IDRD, right? Remember ECC minus ICRC. Minus VDD is 1.8 volts. Minus IDRT, 0.2 milliamp. 
and in the D final three nodes. Okay, so this is one that's point H one minus point H is from two moles. This is less than D threshold, which is point four moles. So this one. Okay, so the device is that. I verified my assumption. Now, I like checking the operating region based on BGS and BGE. If you check your textbook or most textbooks, they actually go and look at BGS and BDS. They look at those two parameters. Same thing. How do I say if the device is in active region based on BDS? So, okay, so right now let me just write our own condition. So for active, for example, I need to say BGS is larger than BDH and BGP is larger than, is less than BDH. Okay? So this is how I like to write it. Simple, easy, I like to write it this way. But let's find an alternative formula for this. I can write this as BGS minus BDS, right? BGE, I can write it as BG minus BD. I can add and subtract the BS to it, so it's BGS minus BDS, right? BG minus BD. I can do that, right? Plus BS minus BS. So I can do that as well. So this is equal to uh, BGS minus BDS. And I'm saying that it has to be less than ETH for active region. Okay, so that's all good. I just rearrange this. I put BDS on this side, ETH on this side, and I'm done. I have a new condition. Or BDS has to be larger than BGS minus BDH. Right? So if you look at your textbook or a lot of other textbooks, they usually write the condition for active region as this, that VGS has to be larger than VGH. That one is checked. The second one is VDS has to be larger than VGS minus VGH. That's how they write it, right? And the reason for that is that in some cases, it can make your life a little bit easier, especially if you're designing a circuit. If you're designing a circuit, you want to keep everything in active region, you know what your voltages are, you are selling it, right? So you already know what your VGS one minus VTH is because you know what is the IP you want from that device. You already know that. If you already know that, well, this equation easily tells you that this is the minimum drain voltage you can have. Put it at something higher than that. So from the design perspective, this equation makes you a light in the Because then you can you know, put, if the minimum VTS is, let's say, 0.1 and you choose it to be 0.3, you know it is an active region, you move on, right? But if you're analyzing the circuit, this is, I think, easier. You look at the gate, you're finding all these voltages. So you're finding gate voltage, you're finding drain voltage, you're finding source voltage, and you have one parameter to compare. What is VGP, what is VGS, right? So this voltage, VGS minus VTH, if you look at, for example, cell transmit, I don't know if you do said uh, that in your book, they call this overhead voltage. This overhead voltage, it means how much beyond VTH I'm pushing VGS. You start all the current everything else is proportional to that. So if you're designing a circuit, you know the overhead. So your life is easier if you're doing this question. If you're analyzing it, you don't know your overhead, you're just finding it out. You're finding out your IP or VGS minus VTH, all those things are kind of This one, I think, is easier. So if you look at your textbook, this table is probably going to look a little bit different. It's, you know, one of them is VGS, the other one is based on VDS. Right? So this one is going to be VDS minus VTH is less than VTH. Sorry, VGS minus VDS is less than VGS minus VTH. And in this case, this one will be from VDS is larger than VGS minus VTH. But it's the same equation, I'm just rearranging it. Okay. 
All right, so that was easy enough. Uh, let's make it a little bit more interesting. So part B, let's say this is part A. What if W over L increases to 4 over Double the mean, right? Make sure this is twice as fast as this one. All those equations we saw before we can probably use. And in this case, same situation, I'm going to assume active so, so that we can jump to the answer. I, I let me use the previous calculations. So I'm going to assume active. I'm going to solve based on this equation. My BGS minus UPH is the same. UNC offset, everything else is the same. It's just this number that has changed. From 2 over 18 to 4, four over 2018. So my current will be twice a bit. Okay? It's like having two of these transistors in parallel. So I'm not going to bother with that calculation uh, again. Uh, I still lack the end. You get ID that is 0.4 million. Okay? Now, I assumed active. Let me see if the assumption holds. BGS uh, is okay. BGS decay is at one, source is zero, it's already larger than 0.4 volts. So this one is okay. How about BGE? Or, or let's do the other. Let's, let's look at BDS. Which one do you have? BGD or BDS? BGD. BGD. So let's look at BGE. So BGD, gate is held at 1 volt, and drain voltage is BGD minus IDRD. Yes, that's so gate great. is held at 1 minus 1.8 minus BGD IDRD. Uh, RD was 5 kilo ohms times 0.4. Right? So in this case, 5 times 0.4 is 2, 1.8 minus that is point, minus 0.2. This becomes 1 minus minus 0.2, and that means 1.2 volts. Uh -oh. This is larger than 0.4. I wanted it to be less than 0.4. So what that means is that this device is not going to be an active region. It's either child or cut, which one? Cut off. Cut off. Uh, no. Aha. No. Uh -huh. <laughs> no. Thank you. No. <laughs> no. Thank no, you. No. Yes. BGS is already not right. Right. So you already have a channel at one end. You assume you don't have it at the other end. You turned out you were wrong. So you have a channel at the other end too. Right. So so because of that. You have a different equation for that. I have a different equation, but. The device will not be in active region, it will be in trial. So, and because I don't know if VGS is small compared to VGS minus VTH or not, I write the whole. So, ID is 1 half mu minus the R's W over L times uh, 2 VGS minus VTH. Times BDS minus BDS squared. Let me redraw the circuit quickly here. I do all that goes in. Okay, so I need to use this equation. These things are easy. So, I handle my kind of and then let's just. Uh, so, that's a handle my kind of uh, times 2 to 4 over 18. So, this is going to be 200 times 10 to the minus 6 divided by 0.18. Right? All of those coefficients, right? This is 100. This is 4 over 0.18 divided by 2. It's going to be 400 over 
point 18. That's the coefficient times VGF minus VTH. VGS is 1 minus 0.4 times 2, so that's 2 times 0.6 times VDS minus VDS squared. I have a problem. I have one equation, two unknowns. I, I want to find I do, but I don't know about VDS. What do I do? Guess. Guess. You don't guess. No. Oh. One equation, two unknowns. I need one more equation. Okay. I equals I S B. That hopefully won't introduce new variables. So, could you do a voltage law from the 1.8 to ground, saying VDS? Like, you could say the voltage drop, uh, and then you start at 1.8, you lose I D times five kilo ohms, then you lose VDS. Yep. Across there. So that's, that's the equation I need. Right? So it, it has both of the variables and an after, and it doesn't need to be the That's great. So KDL yeah. <laughs> says 1.8 at the top is equal to IDRD plus VDS. Okay? So that's good. Now I can solve. So what I can do is that I can solve for VDS and I can solve for ID. I can find ID from this equation, I know everything else. Plug it in here and solve that quadratic equation for VDS. Or I can find VDS from here and plug it into here and solve that equation for ID. I'll do the first because yeah, I don't want to have a complicated expression here that I have to square and, and, uh, and I see the complicated equation. So on the left side, I will have 1.8 minus VDS divided by 5K. That's ID. That is equal to the stuff on the right side. K times that is 1, right? So 1.2 VDS minus VDS squared is quadratic equation. I can solve it and find the two answers. Um, do you have a calculator to solve quadratic equations? Wait, what? One of the answers to the question is not the actual question. 
Oh, I saw, yeah. Yeah. Wait, but like. Because Ma the magic is such a bunch of random answers, I plugged it in. I plugged it in. Based. And I checked it. I was like, it's not even the right question. Base. That's base. Oh, okay. Is check of SAO 10 the same as SAO 15? No, it's different. Really? And it's different dimensions in that question. SAO 10 is 870, SAO 50 is not a manual too. Same thing. Okay. <laughs> no, but the dimensions are also different. Maybe they just plugged in the wrong question. That's how I like losing my mind. I think I'm looking for a little bit. Yeah. Guys, when is it? When is it brightest in the day? Huh? When is it? It's brightest in the day. Well, we just had daylight savings. Hi, noon. But like, is it really? Unknown? Like, there's only two answers. Yeah. Are you just going to the negative one? Why negative? He's going to the negative one. But why? You get rid of it. Because you don't want it. Why? It's B squared. It's a plus minus B. Oh, it's a piece of solving it as a quadratic equation solving it? No, yeah. it is a quadratic equation. Yeah. Yeah. I thought he was solving it simultaneously. Well, he's doing no. his head right now. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. He'd be able to do this. Yeah. He has a recurring case. Man, I want to play this competition. Man, I want to play this competition. Do it. Just tell what it is. You could have told him. No. <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> What is this? Oh, is this a new one? Is this the tip now? E e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e it's like no ads. What's in the box? That is so good. This is plus. Okay, so if that's plus, then do the calculation here for me. What's this? I don't think the serves are like a little unstable. How did I know? Okay, I'll tell you how I knew it was unfair. But there you go. So give me the two VDSs here you get for this. Go back to Desmos. Go to Desmos. What is this? Point two, eight, eight point two, one point five. Oh, he says wrong. He says wrong. Oh, you, you freaking plus. It's supposed to be plus. Well, I, I copied whatever he wrote before. Point three. Point three and point one point eight. Zero eight. One point zero eight. Zero eight. Hey, you know what, Sean? What? At least we're trying. Okay. So I have two answers. Which one do I pick? Which one is the correct answer? Is the vice table circuit that I that can have two answers? Or uh, I made a mistake? The higher? Or Would it be 1.08 because it's higher than 0.4? The BTH? No? What did we assume? We assume the device is in trial region. So if it is in trial region, VDS. So if you go back to the expression of the handout here, VDS has to be, this is proactive, has to be less than VGS minus VTH. Or you can look at VGE. But over there I'm, I have VDS. So VDS, if it is in trial region, has to be less than VGS minus VTH. VGS is 1, VTH is 0.4, this is 0.6. So VDS has to be less than 0.6 for that device to be trial region, only one of these is less than 0.6. Okay? Isn't this the proof to prove it's in that region? So then how can we use that as like the reason that it's the lower one? 
No, you made an assumption, right? Yeah. So if your assumption is wrong, actually what is going to happen is that none of these two are going to make you happy. Both answers will be wrong. But because you made the assumption, there is one answer here that supports your assumption. So you're good. It's like you assume the dive is off and you calculated the current was here. It's supporting your assumption. Okay? So this is the answer I picked. That's if both of them are not possible, are not supporting your assumption, it means that your assumption was wrong. But I have a solution that is uh, satisfying an assumption that is going to be the current, the, the voltage. And then from that, I can go and calculate voltage, the current. How do I calculate the current? Plug it back in. Well, it's just the same. Just plug it in the point. How do I calculate the current? Plug it into the KVL. The second equation, the KVL. Yeah. I know VDS. That's much easier to use than that equation. So I is going to be. I will use the first equation. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's move on. So in general, if you have a MOSFET circuit, you have a MOSFET, and notice that I'm not drawing the bulk terminal anymore, right? So, or the body terminal, not bulk, the body terminal anymore. It's one of the two cases. It's usually, in, in, whenever you don't see it, it means that it is connected to the lowest voltage in your circuit. If the body and, J, body and source are shorted, we usually uh, explicitly show it. So this means that the body is connected to the most negative voltage in my circuit. I don't have to worry about it. That. So you have, you may have a bunch of components around this guy. And like what we did for BJTs, you can have a circuit, an equivalent circuit model. At least maybe for the first few problems that you are doing to make your life easier, to make your analysis easier. You replace the MOSFET with the controlled current source. The controlled current source is controlled by this VGS. This is your case terminal, your source terminal, and your train terminal. Oh, and the cool. amount of current is, ID is, one uh, over L, one half of it, times VGS. It'll be by. Right? So, maybe for the beginning, until you become a little bit more familiar with MOSFETs, you can use this large signal model. And right away, one thing I like about this is that it just shows you that the gate is disconnected from the other side. It is an open circuit between gate and drain and source, unless you want to make connections externally. You can put a resistor between gate and gate, or, or an inductive loop, or capacitor, or whatever. But this basic format, gate is an open loop, an open port, doesn't draw any current. The circuit to which you've connected the gate, it will not know it, it will not notice it. And then on the right side, you have a current source whose value is set by the gate source voltage. So this is called the large signal model. And you know, of course, for this, the device has to be in saturation or active. If it is not in active region, then instead of that current source, you have a different type of current source. You know, let's say if VDS is really, really small, you have a resistor whose value is controlled by the VGS, or you can have the larger expression for IDVDS and right? for the device in parallel region. But the good news again is that your gate is still isolated from everything else. All the interesting stuff are happening between the resource. Gate is just measuring the voltage for you and doesn't let the guy on the other side know. Uh, did you mean that this uh, 
hybrid Pi thing? <coughs> that, that's small signal, right? This is large signal. signal. Oh. I'm assuming all the signals, you know, the oh, so all of this stuff are. Uh, stuff. No, no, it's just. Well, because you like it so much, let's draw the small signal. <laughs> Wait, no, it's, it's not useful then. It's okay. Uh, you asked for it. <laughs> so, what is small signal behavior? Small signal means that I'm going to make a small change and not worry about oh, things that don't change, keep only the stuff that will respond to small changes. So, if you do that from here, you go to this small signal between the yeah, okay. Between the drain, between the gate and source, you have an open circuit, you're not going to have anything else. If the changes are large, it's an open circuit. If the changes are small, it's an open circuit. So between the gate and source, you're going to have your open circuit. Good. Between the drain and source, You're going to have our current source, but it's not going to respond to small changes. We'll see what that means. But right now, I think what is this, and the output I have that. I just have to figure out, you know, what should I put here for the small signal response. So I'll look at that in a second. But this is the small signal equivalent circuit for a MOSFET. Because it's small signal, I'm writing in lower cases, VTS. I need to figure out what is the current source. Good question. If you look at high frequencies, the small signal model for a MOSFET has a capacitor here and a capacitor here. Good news for you, we are looking at small frequencies. So those two, those two capacitors, discrete MOSFETs suck at high frequencies, so you don't need to discrete MOSFETs at high frequencies, you know, you're way better off in BJPs or JPEGs. It's a different type of Integrated MOSFETs, if you only use them at high frequencies, then those guys, well, those guys are included, but the values are small. So for a typical MOSFET, we're talking about maybe tens of amplifiers, even smaller. Yeah. For CGS and CGE. These two capacitors are about the same order. Again, you know, remember gate, drain source, they're about the same, right? Source and drain is symmetric. The CGS and CGD are about equal. You're talking about a few femtofarads to a few tens of femtofarads. For a big, fat power MOSFET, we may talk about a few picofarads. Okay? For the operating frequencies that you guys are dealing with most of the time, those capacitors are the same. Okay, so, so let's figure out the relationship between that current source and whatever other parameters that we may have here. So I had. ID that was one half mu n c ox w over l times. Now my VGS has a small VGS component, right? So this was the original the uh, ID. Now things have changed. I have had a little bit of change at ID, and things are a little bit different. So I'm going to have a slightly different ID on the, sorry, things have changed at the gate source and that's it. So ID is my output. I want to see how it responds to small changes. So I'm going to have a small change in ID. And that's because of a small change in VGS. Right? So I have a small change in VGS, which causes a small change, hopefully, at ID. And I want to see what is the relationship between this uh, VGS and delta VGS and delta ID. That's the whole point of small signal. I want to make a small change at VGS, see how much is the small change at ID. Uh, if you want to go back to the curves that we used to draw, So ID VGS from MOSFET, we had nothing at the beginning and the quadratic relationship. Afterwards, so this is VGS naught. That gives me ID naught. 
And I increased this PGL currency by a small amount, and the data is slightly higher. Current, I want to see, you know, without going through the nonlinear calculations, I want to see if I can estimate that delta IV knowing delta BGS at the bottom. We've done this many times already, right? So it's just a different equation we're trying to do to use here. Okay, so let me write it as IV plus delta IV <coughs> is equal to. I'm going to separate the two terms in my quadratic equation. One half mu n C ox. This thing is a little bit boring. Okay, so this mu n C ox W over L, if you're dealing with one transistor, sometimes they call it KN. It's called the whole KN. I'm not going to do that. But if you see technology parameter or KN for a MOSFET, it's all of those things combined into one. Because they are all constants. When you have your device, they're all constants. Uh, times, so I'm going to have BTS minus BTH, right? The first two terms that I had from before. That's where plus delta BTS squared plus 2 delta BTS times BTS minus BTH. Right? So I just squared that term. Calculated that term. Now, looking at this uh, equation, I'm going to make one assumption here. I'm going to make an assumption that assuming delta BGS is small. I can write that equation as this. So I noticed that this, this expression, this part of it, is my ID, whether I had before. Right? This is before the delta BTS came in. So that's whatever I had before, so I'm going to write it as ID. So let's just call it ID mouse maybe. So, so it's going to be ID mouse plus delta ID is equal to ID mouse plus the rest of it, right? Mu N C ox W over L alphabet times. Now, assuming delta BGS is small, I'm going to ignore that term <coughs> compared to this, right? So assuming that is small, I'm going to ignore that term times what I have left is 2 delta BGS times BGS minus BGS. And the rest is easy. The rest is easy because I did not cancel and I have a linear relationship between delta BGS and delta IV. And I'm going to say approximately, right? Because I'm making an assumption, I'm ignoring that delta BGS squared term. Uh, delta BGS times New and Neox, and this VGS is VGS Mox. This is my VC, this is the starting point. So I have good news. For small VGS, I have a linear relationship between IV and VGS. Delta IV and delta VGS, right? Because this is a constant. VGS not minus VTH comes from my DC bias at the original point I was. These are constants. So delta VGS, if I have a small value of delta VGS, I can just multiply by this number and get Delta IV. I don't have to do those complicated calculations. Um, what does it mean when I say delta VGS is small? What does small mean? One millivolt, one microvolt, one volt. What is small? Relative to what's Yeah. I'm ignoring it. Look at this. I can factor delta VGS out. I'm ignoring delta VGS. 
when I did that. So BGS, delta BGS small, this means I B BGS or delta BGS is much less than BGS minus BGH. Okay? So remember for BJTs for diodes, our yardstick was VT, the, the thermal voltage, 25 minutes. In here for MOSFETs, it's BGS not minus 15. If it is 1 volt, delta BGS has to be, let's say, 100 millivolts or small. If this is 0.1, you have to have a smaller range for that BGS. So it's not like BGTs and diodes that have, you have a fixed number. It's, it's going to depend on your bias. It's going to depend on your device. OK. So yeah, I can write that equation. So I have that relationship now. The small signal current over there is delta ID, changes in current. Delta BGS is my small signal BGS, right? And that's the factor that is going to determine the relationship. Let me do it in a slightly different way. And then we name this thing. What I did is that I recalculated the current for a slightly larger BGS. I could have done something a little bit different. I could have said, okay, this is where I am sitting. I have a slight delta VGS here. I could find out what delta IV is if I know the slope of this curve. Right? If I know the slope of that curve, the slope of this curve here is delta IV over delta VGS. And if delta VGS is small, I can very quickly find delta IV. Right? So in other words, I'm saying this. I'm saying that uh, delta IV is your delta VGS times the slope of that curve at that point. So VIV when VGS is equal to VGS. Right? I can do that. And if I do that, uh, life is actually a little bit easier. I can calculate that expression quickly. So VIV over DVGS. So this is V over DVGS of this expression. One half mu and C ox W over L VGS minus UTH squared. Okay, and if I take the derivative of this expression relative to VGS, so I will have just two times this expression, uh, that power of two over there. So that's going to be one half, one half and two cancel, so there's no one half. Mu and E ox W over L times VGS minus UTH. So that's the slope of that curve at any VGS minus VTH value at the bias point, we just plug in VGS naught for that, right? And then you're back to that same expression in green in the above. Right? That coefficient is the same as what we have. Same thing, right? Same thing. Um, what do you want to call this parameter? Change in IV when I change VGS. What did we call it for VJT? Change in IC when I change VB. I use the same Oh, it's Transconductance. Yes, one over O. Transconductance, right? It's not conductance because conductance means I change the voltage here, the current in this branch changes. That's conductance. It's called transconductance because I change the voltage here, the current in some other branch changes. Right? So the information is transferred from one to the other. So this is transconductance. We have we had that before. What did we call it for circuit purposes? What was the symbol? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Go back up to your model. Yeah. 
and that's your small state normal. Okay? So just G and BGS. But why, like what we did for the BJTs, you do your DC analysis first, large signal analysis first. You figure out what is your ID, your G, BGS, all those things at DC. Once you have that, and if you're interested in seeing how this thing behaves, when the small signal comes in and all that, you replace your transistor with a small signal model. GM VGS, that's how you calculate GM from DC parameters. VGS is now the small signal VGS, the changes, whatever that is causing the change, the disturbance, and then you're done. And this is much easier than a VGS. Because instead of that R pi thing, you have an open circuit. The other way to look at it, and I mean, don't think about it that way for too long. But the other way to look at the MOSFET is to think about it as a BJT with an infinite beta. Right? Infinite beta means IP becomes zero. Or you have an open circuit, or your R pi is empty. Keep it right there, don't go any further than that. Because all the equations after that are there. Right? But the MOSFET, you can think of it as a BJT with infinite beta. Okay, so let's look at this GM thing for one moment. And we already know GM is an important thing, right? From BJT discussions, oh. Do we want to take a break? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so let's bring in this break. Can we scan that? Just smile. Can you roll a D20? Oh my god! I made an oopsie! I made an oopsie! Alright, well, I made it to you. That's a 1 in 400. Wait, 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 what am I reading? What am I reading? 6. I was going to say 6. I said 6. Okay, okay, go ahead, go ahead. 7, 2, 3, 0. That's a fucking green. Alright, alright, double nothing. Uh, you know, 5. This is gambling. Yo, yeah, get that people. What is this gambling? You have to get paid. Hey, 